do you think he's really addicted? And and because uh, I know for a minute there, they also talked about he was addicted to side posts because of his long face. But uh, and he got rid of that addiction. He looks much better now, bro. Much better. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that you can be addicted to softball? You think Rich is addicted to softball, or is this just another example of fucking Rich being rich? I think he is getting kind of obsessed. He had even said, what do you think about dog? Like, think about anybody that's addicted to fucking pills, anybody that's addicted to alcohol. I feel like the people, when they have an addiction, they go to it when they, to bring them up, right? You're feeling down. You're going to smoke. You're going to drink. You're going to whatever, whatever your drug of choice is, right? Is it an addiction or an excuse to get out of the house? Cause, cause I'm not. I, you're not addicted. Is he gonna go play softball at two a.m.? See, the, you're right. Or is huh? he doing it? Or is he doing it when it's convenient when the kids are up? He said his daughter just dropped something and he was pissed. And his friend hit him up and was like, "Hey, can you come out to play right now?" And he was like, "Cool." <laughs> I haven't heard that since I was about nine. <laughs> Did Sarah ask if his room was clean, bro? If he's addicted. Sarah's going to catch him out under the streetlight at like 4 a.m. with his Cal Ripken Jr. mid or his Mizuno fucking throwing pop flies to himself. If he does that, he's addicted. If he's not playing by himself at all hours of the morning, he's just trying to get out the house. I, I feel like that's a good point. I feel, I, feel, I feel like it's a really good point because, like you said, if you're addicted, you're going you're gonna to dog like. Because he said he wants to play every day, right? When do people mostly play softball? Fucking dinner time. Yeah, he's lucky I didn't call in and fuck with his program. Theo, I guess Jordan went out of town. Kavino was right. left watching Theo. And right. then Theo went on a... a he, Theo was Hunter actually... Strike. Yeah, he he's was acting like strike. a brat, right? He's, he, was. he was like... It really did remind me of like when your kids throw a fit. And it's funny because Kavino hasn't... Jordan's never had a kid. Kavino's daughter hasn't, you know, been like... She she's a little bit older, so the I'm sure her bratty moods and stuff are different than when she was a kid. But you know when sure. the kids are like, you know, three, four years old and they're just throwing like a straight up brat fit? Yes. That's what I feel like Theo was doing. He was like, Jordan's out of town. Well, fuck this. I'm not eating. Don't talk to me. <laughs> exactly. But you know what, though? See, and it's funny because Jordan was super, like, upset. Like, oh, my goodness. What do you mean he's not eating? I'm like, Doug, if this freaking, you know, 13-pound dog is throwing a fit, that's basically what he's doing. He's not going to starve to death because he's being stubborn. He's going to get – it reminds me of, like, like our kids, right, when they're little and they don't want to eat something. And you're like, all right, then fine, then, you know, fucking starve because that's what you're going to eat. They'll throw a fit. They won't eat. They'll get hungry enough. They'll come back to the table and be like, all right, I was just fucking around, right? I feel like that's what Theo's going to do. So a dog, you're not going to, you're not going to freaking be like, oh my goodness, I'm so concerned he hasn't eaten for a day and a half. He gets hungry enough, dog. He's not going to let himself die. Bro, I'm just saying, I'm not naming no names, but I know a couple of people out there that might have threw a couple of bong rips steals way and see if that little fucker didn't eat then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what, though? That's the thing. If, if, I think if Covino would have had some in his house or even given him some edibles, if he had some edibles, but I don't, yeah, I don't think he carries them in his house, but. Or at the bare minimum, those legal CBD treats. Yeah. Keep those fuckers on deck. Well, the CBD make you hungry, too. I don't think it'll make you hungry. But it'll, if, if he's doing that, throwing a fit, maybe it'll make him chill out a little bit. Oh, maybe yeah, you're right. Type, you know what I mean? You're right. But, yeah, no, that sucks. That sucks because, you know what, I would have been worried too. So I don't fault Kavino one bit because, bro, you got a new dog and you know something's not right. Like, you know, fucking little Chapo. The other day, fucking he got a cough. And I try to wait for a day or two to see if it goes away. But after it doesn't go away, you're like, bro, something might be really wrong with this guy. Like, I got to take him in. You know what I mean? So whenever they got some crazy ass abnormal behavior like not eating, I would have been concerned too. You know, um, especially after a, the first day. One day, okay, maybe he's just not in the mood or he got a sour stomach or something like that. But you're going on fucking 36, 48 hours. Something's wrong. I think, um, oh, you know what? Rich actually made a statement this week that I want to know how you feel about it. He said that somebody... If there's like a chick at the gym and she's sweaty, it's hotter than if somebody's like 300 that. pounds. <laughs> well, what do you think I about that? It. I think he's right. You know, it's funny because I don't want to say he's right, but he's right. He's right. You know, I, I don't want to say. Bro, 
throws. He's right. Hotter chicks are hotter. She could be making a mayonnaise sandwich and she's hotter. If they're both <laughs> naked and no sweat, right? They're both making a mayonnaise sandwich. It's hotter. going to be hotter. So, so even if the sweat turns you off, it's not going to be as bad as the chick that you were less attracted to to start with. No. And see, the thing is, I don't think one's hotter. I think the other one's just grosser. You know, right. I think because no, right. I, I go the way I look at it. I'm like, if there's a chick and if she's hot and she's like in her freaking sports bra and, you know, a little tight leggings or whatever. And she looks bad and she's sweaty. You're not thinking, oh, she looks bad because she's sweaty. Right. No. You're just saying, oh, damn, she looks bad. And then she if there's somebody. As, but, maybe, but maybe she don't look as bad because she's sweaty. And see, but if there's somebody that's fucking Not gross, yeah, dog, like, there's somebody that's gross and then they're all sweaty. Now they're really gross, you know? No. And, and I think you're right because the thing is, is hot, hot chicks can get away with a lot more, right? Like so much if more. They're, if they're hot enough, bro, they could drop a deuce and you hear them through the door and you're like, oh, that's kind of gross. But as long as she wipes her butt, I'll still stab it. <laughs> and uh, you know what I mean? But like. Uh, they could do so much, dude. They could do so much, but because they're already hot, you'll look the other way on so much. But if you're not attracted to them at all, your tolerance for fucking, you know, being irritated, there's none there. You, there's no tolerance because why would you be tolerant? You know what I mean? You just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying. You know what? Um, I don't know if. Same, same with me, bro. I, I don't, I mean. I think I'm a handsome dude. Don't get me wrong, but I don't got a six pack fucking Johnny fucking muscles. I mean, I, there's certain shit Johnny muscles could probably get away with that maybe I can't. But if Johnny Johnny six packs got a little peat though, well then that's when I catch him in the race. <laughs> you know, the guys were talking about your neighbor and how well do you know your neighbor? Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. They're absolutely right, bro. I mean, I know my neighbor. I know one neighbor next door, and I talk to him like when I see him outside or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I don't know the other five people in this block. I know the other people across the street, but I don't know their names. And I remember at all my houses. I mean, I'm always kind of before weed was legal. I was always kind of keeping myself anyways, because my, my apartment or my house always smelled like weed because I was always puffing all the time. So I didn't take kindly to strangers, any hoots, but mm. it just in general, I think people are like that nowadays. And, and I think they were right, man. People don't, you don't know all your neighbors like you used to. Yeah, no, I know. Think about it, Doug. Like when I was a kid, I remember, I mean, we were friends with all the neighbors and I feel like even my parents kind of knew the neighbors, you know, and now I'm like the neighbor that lives directly across the street from me. I've interacted with them maybe once because they were having a yard sale one day and I walked over to look at some of the shit and just kind of say hello. Down, that, was, Gary that, <laughs> that was like the only time I've enter, ever interacted with them. And then... um next door we have this lady that's like 300 years old and she's a fucking lunatic like but those neighbor but dog so next month i will have lived in this house for a year i didn't uh, up until like maybe a week and a half ago i didn't know my neighbor to the other side of me so we have the pigeon lady that lives on one side on the other side i didn't know that that was a black family <laughs> i have no idea who's on my left side um, when you're pulling in my driveway the, the house to the right i've never seen them the people next to them, I've never seen them either. It just happened one day I was pulling out, I was leaving to work and I saw them bringing their trash can out and it was like some older black lady. And I was like, oh shit, who would have thunk it? You know, I had no idea. It was crazy. And, and so like, yeah, other than that dog, I don't even know. Um, there's a dude that lives at the end of the street, some young dude and his chick. Right. I maybe said what's up to him driving by a couple of times or whatever. Maybe talk to him like once, but that's all I know, you know. And you know, and you know what's crazy is that's actually bringing that up. That's actually how I met Stickman. His friend Jeff Stoner uh, lived not across the street, but he lived to the across the street, but one house to the left. And mm. Stickman was his buddy, and they were like a grade younger than me, maybe two grades, but one grade I think. But he was always at Stoner's house, and Stoner had a basketball court and shit. All the kids in the neighborhood were over there playing basketball. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And so that that's actually how I met Stick Man and knew he was cool. I mean, he lived in my neighborhood, but uh, like I said, they were a little they hung out with a different crowd kind of than I did. And um and and so that's how I actually got cool and became friends with Stick Man was was over in my neighbor's house. I wanna know how your homie gets a name like Stoner when everybody that you know is fucking smoking. That was his name, Jeff Stoner. Oh, 
I thought yeah. you guys, I thought he was like maybe a fucking pothead and you guys, but I'm like, wait, you guys are all he smoking. Was a, he, no, he was a stoner too, but that, that was his real name was Jeff Stoner. Oh, okay. Okay. Never mind. I was yeah. just like, how did the, how did he luck out and be the only one you guys called stoner when everybody's smoking, you know? Yeah, no, that was his name. Uh, you're like, we got stoner. That's pothead. We got chiefs over here. We got fucking, you know, I know. Yep. No. Yes, sir. But now, so any fucking hoots but yeah that was the good old days man everyone knew each other you know what i mean yeah what's up i know you said you had a couple of things what's something else well I, fuck man i fucking the other thing that i had was fucking uh rich did you catch him about brushing his teeth saying he don't always brush his teeth for the two minutes oh yeah 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 he He's said nasty dog he said that's a long time Bro, that's the manufacturer's recommendation on the fucking electronic toothbrush. Is he a dentist or is he a fucking broadcast guy? No, Doug, not the not the dentist. I mean, not the manufacturer recommendation. Doug, I remember somebody coming to my classroom in like third grade. So we're talking about how old are you in third grade? Like eight years old? Yeah. We're fucking talking like fucking 30 years ago, you know, fucking 26 years ago, whatever the fuck it was. Insane to brush your teeth for two and a half minutes. And you know, dog, you don't want to know why I remember it was two and a half minutes because I was in like third grade or some shit. And they were like, how long are you supposed to brush your teeth? And some kids were like 30 seconds. And then some kids were like five minutes. And then they were, um, somebody yelled out two minutes. And then the lady was like, you're close. Like the dentist or whoever came to talk to us. And somebody else was like three minutes. And they were like, you're close. And I was like, as like a little third grader, I'm like, listen, she just said this motherfucker was close oh, at two got, minutes. You got the answer? Yeah. And I remember I remember my train of thought because I go, wait, she said close. This motherfucker said three minutes. I'm like, the only logical answer is right between the two that she said was close. Right. right. And when I said it, all the fucking kids looked at me like I was a fucking nerd. There, I remember everybody looking at me like they give you a toothbrush, and I was like, uh, "No, fucking, I don't even." I think they just gave us fucking advice and a pat on the back. Our school is cheap as fuck, Doug. We had that, we had that swish and spit, that pink shit that like yep. hurt your mouth. Yep. They would come and do that shit, dog. It was probably during like one of those weeks where fucking fluoride in it. Yeah, fucking. It was probably one of. The, but I remember. When I was like two and a half minutes, and then everybody looked at me like, "Look at this fucking dork over here," and I was like, "Fuck that! I'll never be a dork again." Like Col Colgate, bitch. That's when I got fucking cool, you know. But nah, the thing the thing is, is like even with the two minutes, that's when the toothbrush turns off. So there's times I don't know about you where I'll, I'll go the full two minutes, and then you go to rinse your mouth out, and you still feel a little plaque on your front tooth or something like you missed the spot, and even that wasn't long enough. Then I got to brush my shit a little more. Yeah. So. It's like, well, hold on, bro. In COVID, they told you to wash your hands for 20 seconds. Does he think five seconds is cool in that too or what? Doug, you know what I've become like obsessed with lately? Well, I don't want to say lately. Maybe over the last like three or four years, fucking yeah. flossing. And yeah. I, I feel like the greatest invention of all time is those little floss individual picks, picks, picks. that they yep. give you. At the Dollar Tree? Doug, fucking you get a pack of like... 300 for like 28 cents you know yeah for and sure. doug like back in the day when we were young and you had to fucking wrap that shit around your finger yeah fine you're fucking get all hands all discolored exactly <laughs> wrap it around your finger it starts turning blue as you're trying to floss yeah. dog that shit was such a pain in the ass these I feel my finger little fucking little flossers dog i'm fucking i have some in my bag well my backpack that i take with me to work and i'm fucking like boom just throw the motherfuckers like it's so easy you know the only, the only bunk thing with those is usually i don't know if you've had this happen to you but i'm sure you have uh the fucking ziploc is not great on the bag and half the time they'll spill out oh yeah oh yeah no dog and the ziploc that i have it has like an actual little zip like little fucking okay. attachment little it, it's not just like you close it like you, you with your fingers it has right. an actual zip little fucking attachment and even still sometimes that shit it doesn't stay closed and i'll open my backpack and there's a gang they're all over the fucking bottom of it and but, do you throw those away or do you use them fuck no i keep those dog because in my shit because what i'll do is in my bag i'll have like my backpack it, it's like it's basically like a purse i i've told you the story 
where um bro dog where because I, I have like cough drops in there i'll have fucking tylenol i have the little floss shit i have and dog when my daughter was like three years you old got cough drops in there for you get the cold more than once or twice a year dog i fucking have i have my shit's bad you know well you know all the problems i had with my throat and yeah, shit I, I do know that so yeah it was it was bad and um cough drops aren't bad for that shit they they've always helped and even like right now as I'm talking to you, I'm having to kind of fight back from coughing because I have like it, it's like really um, scratchy right now. Um, and I have like really bad allergies that kind of um, piles on that shit, makes it worse. But dog, when my daughter was like three years old, I remember we were leaving and we, we were going to go like to my mom's or something. And she was like, Daddy, don't forget your purse. And I was like, uh, oh, fuck. You mean you're I'm like, for, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, all right, Kennedy. Um, it's called a backpack. Thank you very much. You know, but um, she didn't know any different. She just like, hey, there's the shit that you take whenever we leave. Just like mommy, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, in her mind, she was like, it's a purse. So um, yeah, but no, but when if those shits fall out and they're still in my bag, I'm using those motherfuckers because I especially like the ones that have the little minty taste to them. So after you're fucking picking them out and you have that little minty fucking taste and you rinse your mouth, fuck, I feel like I feel fresh. See, I keep that shit in my console, center console, because I'm always in my car. I would, no one drives me nowhere, so I'm always driving, and that's that's where I keep mine at. Yeah, I don't have a man. I don't have a man bag. I carry. I wear a watch. I got my fucking. Um, I got my phone. I got one house key on the same ring as my car key, and um, and my wallet, and a vape pen. What else do I carry? I think that's about it, bro. Doc, I have so much shit in my bag. I even unless have I'm, like... Unless I'm getting loaded, then I'll bring some weed and some blunt. Doug, I got a sunscreen in my bag. I have... My, my fucking face has been breaking out and this crazy ass rash and shit. So I have like this fucking cream in there. I have this shit that my sister gave me called Miracle Oil. I have... Uh, <laughs> that, that shit's heavy. Sometimes I have my laptop in there with my charger. Doug, I fucking... This shit... Because even my sunglasses I keep in the car. Everything I just keep in the car. You know what I mean? Yeah. Visine, lighter, extra swishers. <laughs> all, all of your essentials? Yeah. You got this man, though. You never know when you're going to have to roll up. Yeah. Yeah, true. Um, I feel like Rich had a very good point this week, dog, when he was talking about your pants size. I feel like this is very, very me. Because, like, most of my adult life, I've been in a pant size, I think we've talked about this before, waist 38, or if I'm getting a little pudgier, 40, right? And that's it. I talked to you um, when I said right now, I talked to you a little while ago, and I told you about when I was like 40 pounds heavier, 45 pounds heavier, I had gone up a, a couple of sizes, so I was like a 42, 44 oh. maybe, and that was like, when that happened, I think that was when I locked it in. I was like, oh, come on now. And it wasn't right. even that. I, I think I maybe bought one pair of pants that was around that size. But other than that, I was like, I got to lock this in. So that was when I kicked back and I started, I got back to my 3840. And now I'm, I'm just like at a good 38. If I'm like kicking ass, I'll go down to like a 36, but that's usually about 38 is where, where I rest. So in my mind, I feel like where Rich was saying, he's at like a 32, 34 or whatever the hell. And really? I, yeah, I think he's like a, I think he said, is, is that skinny? So does, it, does his nuts breathe? No, I think him, I think Cavino said the same thing because when Cavino said he has one pair of pants, that's 36. They were like spot and rich and like everybody were like, really, really? And Cavino said, yeah, those 36s are big on him. So I think they're yeah. both in that range, that like 32, 34 range. But I feel like if I if I have a pair of 36 pants and I'm like, oh, fuck, these are fitting me. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, I'm, I'm killing it, you know. But usually I hover around 38. So Bro, I, I wore 36 since high school. For real? I mean, I could probably, like, especially right now, 38s are big on me. I probably could squeeze into some. I just don't want my shit that tight. And I'm, and they won't look like skinny jeans or nothing like that. I just don't. I, I need room to breathe. You know what I mean? And so yeah. 36s, like, I could probably find some out there that I could wear that would that would work. But I just don't like that super tight look. Yeah. There's, um, I don't know. I feel like, I, I feel like that's a good, a good thing to have, though. 
like Rich saying he likes to stay. It, it, he what he had said is if I can stay in these pants my whole life, I'd be happy, which I feel like is a good goal, right? He's not trying to get all ripped, but if he goes up a pant size or two, he's like, come on, I need to dial it back. For and sure. and I feel like that that's a good way to a good way to live because dog if you're somebody and I've known people who say they are a 36 and next thing you know they're a 38 they're a 40 they're a 42 they're a 44 they're a 50 but bro I've known people who hey, who just don't give a shit you know I'm sure they do kind of but to keep blowing up like that and just not dialing it back when you're like a pant size or two high you're like oh shit. Well, then I, you got a project instead of just a little little mission. <laughs> yeah, and not and not only that, bro. Tell me if I'm wrong. You start jumping like three sizes, like just just say, you know, you were a a thirty. Just say you were forty, and you go to forty two, then you go to forty four, and then you're at forty six. Your skin ain't gonna be right when you lose all that weight either. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. At that point, you're gaining fifty, sixty pounds, and. You know, bro, they're going to leave a stretch mark or two. It just it is what it is. You're doing damage. At that point, you're doing – once you go over a couple for sure, you're, you're going to be able to tell later that you were there. Yeah. No, Doug, I've known people in my life that have dropped maybe to like even a 34, 36 and have been up to a 50. And then they can get it, you know, they'll, they'll get it on lock and they'll work their ass off and get back to like a 36 – and then next thing you know, they're in a 44, 48. And you're like, dog, like to me, that's crazy to fluctuate that crazy. Like I told you I was heavier this many years ago, Doug, but it's just kind of chipping away at it over the years. And I feel like that's the most uh, like sustain- sustainable, you know? I know this. Everything you just said is the reason why I go to the gym every day and ride five miles. Because the thing is, the one day I talk myself into you need a rest day or a day off or whatnot, that shit's going to fuck up my whole routine. And I got to do what I got to do because I know this. If I don't want to go back up to a to a to some 38s don't fit and now I'm at a 40, I just got to keep going to the gym. Mm-hmm. If I do that and I stay on my program, I will not absolutely gain weight. That ball's in my court. Don't matter what I eat. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If I go ride those five or six miles every day and go sit in the sauna for 20 or 30 minutes – it don't matter what I eat, especially if I work that day. So it's, it's on me. And so every single day, every time I try to punk out and be like, man, today I'm tired or it's getting late. I'm like, you want to be, you want to be a chubby again? If you don't want your old chubs back, you better take your ass to the gym. And I just go every time. You know what, Doug? I actually, you brought up a good point. You, you mentioned the word sauna and Cavino. Let me see. I got that too. If that's what you're about to talk about. Yeah. That I just, it said, it said my zoom wasn't recording. Okay. Yeah. Um, Covino was talking about people being loud in the sauna. Have you experienced that? I've, I don't do the sauna. Right. We don't have a sauna at my gym. We're just, it's very bare bones. And yeah, so. I'm like Ponce de Leon, bro. I'm a world traveler. So I lived in uh, McKinleyville. We had a gym over there and they didn't even have a sauna. Not the gym I went to. Uh-huh. And then when I lived in, when I lived in Coos Bay, um, their shit was, uh, the men's side had a sauna and the women's side had their own sauna. And that was kind of weird because I'm old ass fucking Oregonian men would come in there with their fucking dick swinging around. I'm like, bro, put on a towel or something. <laughs> and only, only place that people did that fucking like heavy, you know what I mean? Was in Oregon. Um, but in Fresno, we had a co-ed sauna as well. I went to GB3 and, um, and it was co-ed and there'd be sometimes there'd be 40, 50 people in that motherfucker. Oh, really? Oh, bro. There's a lot. There's a lot. Sometimes you couldn't even get in. And, uh, there's a lot, 40, 40, 50 people, you know, at least 40 people. And it was, but it was probably like a 10 by 10, you know what I mean? With benches and like, you know, benches on top of benches. So like you could sit on the top deck and then had like the lower deck motherfuckers be running in place. And hell yeah, these motherfuckers would always play their music. I can, and I'm going to take it one farther. I don't like to hear the old white man at Walmart playing his fucking music while he's in the handicap chair either. Like keep your shit to yourself, bitch. They sell the headphones at the dollar tree. I don't want to hear what you're fucking listening to. Dog, you know what? I don't know what it is. And I maybe I'm getting old because. No, it's disrespect. Dog, but these kids, like Covino mentioned, he said these um, kids, like he had mentioned a few weeks ago. And he mentioned again this week where he said like these bad bunny type kids or whatever. Dog, these kids, I work at a community college, right? And these kids like today. I was working up front 
and just like where like all the people where all the traffic is right i prefer the back and psh, me too i i oh i wasn't even meaning it like that i just meant like i fucking hate working up front but i had to cover the front for a while and dog like kids coming out of the elevators and shit have just their phone playing full blast like no regard for anybody dog like literally and it's always those you know uh those carol g bad bunny freaking uh becky g all these like whatever the hell songs are playing they're all and you're like dog for real like shut the fuck up put your shit away put on some headphones and go old school make someone ask you what kind of music you like dog that was like uh, today when i seen that shit i was like are you fuck like i felt very sebastian Man- maniscalco like aren't you embarrassed like i don't fuck, like that shit neither dog like fuck it was fucking you, annoying you, you know you know what it is though bro it, what these idiots that do that shit don't really understand is for anybody that pays attention you are you have no self-awareness what you're telling everybody is what i got going on right now is more important than anything that's going on. And I'm going to be so disrespectful and discourteous, I'm going to force everyone I come into contact with to hear my music. Like the only place I think that's acceptable is when you got beat and you're smashing around in your car and you fucking, you bought a car, you paid the tags, you paid the insurance. Motherfuckers don't like it, they can roll their window up. You know what I'm saying? But I can't roll my window up when you're passing through the hallway or we're mm-hmm. in the elevator and you're fucking bumping Carol G. Yeah, no, and today when I seen that I hate shit. hate it. Top five. Okay. All right, yeah, no, you know what? That, that's actually that's a good point, Mike five two five. The hell, Mike Doug? You said that he's become like the NFL fucking TikTok analyst guy, right? Bro, he got a fucking contract with FanDuel or some shit. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he, he's selling picks. <laughs> Doug, did you hear like maybe like two three weeks ago? Covino said that Mike's hitting him up. And he's like, I don't know what's going on, bro. He's like, I can't get shit on my views. He's like, I don't know what to do, but these chicks are getting like hundreds of thousands of views and they don't do shit. And I was like, Mike, that's that's the way it is, dog. Like, seriously. But he would have wiped his bread and butter. He d- yeah, Exactly. He and see, the thing is, I think the thing that made him so lovable is that he was doing top fives, whatever podcast Cheetos, they whatever. Were silly. Right. Yeah. It's whatever. He was himself. It wasn't a topic. And see, the he thing was. is, he was he was himself, and I feel like now he's trying to feed into the he's algorithm. He trying to, yeah, he is. You know, so it's not genuine, and it's not and it's not working for him. I don't well, know. And I watched the the most recent one. He's bouncing back and forth. He had no like he had him on on two sides, right? So he had games on this side, games on this side. He was green screening, and instead of going like game, 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 game. He did like this, then he did like this, this, this. Like his his shit was off. Like he wasn't symmetrical either when he was doing it. And I don't know how big of a I don't know who else saw that or paid attention, but you know, me and you talk about it all the time. I mean, we're not the most professional guys out there, but I mean you try to put a level of respect out when you know you try to give somewhat of a decent product. Mm. And I think that um not that his product wasn't decent, but those are the flaws you want to fix. Those are the things you don't want the viewer to see, especially if you're having viewer fucking issues. Yeah. And, and you're right, bro. He was lovable. He was genuine. You know, top five. Let's go. And then yeah. he would just get so jazzed up for coming in at number one. He does not bring that same energy to his picks. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, guys. You left some comments and the Giants can't win every time. And it's not the same as coming in at number one. It's just not the same energy. Yeah. No, 100%. Because I watch. And that's the thing is that because he. Like, like we're saying, he's trying to go, okay, this is what people want to see. Maybe maybe it's stuff that's coming across his TikTok and he's seen, oh, okay, cool. Like these are videos that I enjoy. So he's trying to do them. But but if I think if he just goes back to the beginning, goes back to his roots. Doc, this is how I look, I look at it like this. You have um, a band, right? They've been together 10 years. They've been writing the music. I've heard of? Huh? Is it a band I've heard of? It's your favorite band, okay? They've been together 
10 years, they've been riding, they've been, you know, touring in their, their van that breaks down every city they go to. They've been putting heart and soul and, and sweat into these lyrics and they're tweaking it here and there. And then, uh-huh. you know, they put out, they finally get scrounged oh, up enough don't, money. Don't, don't, don't forget the most important part. What? Selling CDs and, and tapes and, and merch out the trunk. Okay, right. And putting then up, so, putting up posters in every city they're at and flyers. And they and got they got a record deal, right? And and they put out they put out this album with all that shit, all this work they've been putting into for ten years, right? And they have mm-hmm. one or two singles off this album that catches fire, right? And right, so it catches fire. Then what does the record company do? Let's throw another album out that's why a lot of a lot of bands have what's called the sophomore slump right because they spent so many years doing this album putting this together perfecting it the record company's like boom we got one or two hits popular you're popular right now let's crank out another album in three months boom let's put this out you're gonna lose the quality now the record company's taking over it they're trying to get a mainstream hit they're trying to force a hit they're trying boom Second album doesn't do as well. The record company is either going to maybe give you an opportunity to go back to the drawing board or they're going to they're going to cut you from the record label. Nowadays, they're just going to cut you. But My 525 so much, needs to go back to the first album. But there's also so much with that analogy behind the scenes, too, though. They promote the songs that they feel are good, not you. They take away a lot of your creative artistry they take away your creativity because they limit what you can and can't say usually on that first one that's already on fire that they sign you for they can't touch it and cut it and chop it Cavino and rich on espn right because look at that i mean the maxim Cavino and rich were different from the espn Cavino and rich Mm -hmm. and that and that's what happens the maxim espn is them just on fire selling cds out their trunk but selling you know, a shitload of them. It's because they were big time, bro. I mean, but they were hustling. You know what I mean? They were young and they were hustling. And then the ESPN is almost like when they got their major league. Right. Contract. Now ESPN is like, hey, we're a Disney company. I love, I love Sirius, but I mean, I love Sirius, but I, I'm pretty sure that more people have access to ESPN than satellite radio. Mm-hmm. Now you know you're I mean? on. So that that is their big contract. Yeah. No, I feel you 100%. And I, so I, I think that's what Mike needs to do. Same, same with Fox. I mean, that they got another big contract. And Sirius is cool. That's that's still something to be proud of, absolutely. Because, I mean, they're big players. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, the content changes. Yeah, no, 100%. But if Mike, Mike525, if you're listening, just go back to your roots. That's what people loved about you, you know? Well, I'll tell you this, Mike525, if you're listening. My advice would be to, to get creative and try to do some dope-ass top fives and see what those things do. Use some of your same hashtags you were using before and just create new ones. Just, just you know, you took a break. Just fire that thing back up and see what happens. Yeah, no, I, I was trying to look at this. I, I'm trying to think of, Doug, um, there was there was a, a friend in need that kind of came across Kavino and Rich. And the dude was talking about his son wants to get a mullet and they don't want to let him. Him and his ex-wife don't want to let the kid get the mullet and this and this. And... Did, was there ever a time, Doug, when your when your daughter was was young and where she wanted to get maybe colors in her hair or something or something that w- was there any ever anything that she went through that you didn't approve of, like with the hairstyle or I got I got two sides of that story. Let me hear with her because, you know, she lived with me. Um, she was she wanted piercings and she wanted some tattoos and uh I wouldn't let her do it. And even when she was over 18, she still lived at home for a while. So I highly, highly discouraged it. You know what I mean? And obviously, when you don't have that much influence, what do you think the first thing they go and do is? And so now she's got multiple piercings and she's got multiple tattoos. So on the other hand, with that same analogy, uh, Augustina's son, little Ruben, yeah. he, wanted to ha- he wanted to have a mullet. Same shit, bro. I try to discourage him. I'm like, man, that shit's corny. Don't do it. He went and did it. He rocked it. He actually rocked it in a good way. But he had that damn mola for like three or four years. But then, boom, when he was here a month or two ago, he fucking shaved it off. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're you're right as far as like just – and if it was, if it was say, it was my son and he wanted to get a mullet or he wanted to get um, a stupid haircut, but it, it's – 
it's kind of in fucking let him dog it, it's a fucking haircut you know like 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 even what, though what about piercings or a tattoo i think piercings how, how old that kid huh how old the kid that wants the mullet uh like 13 maybe I'm having a mullet, bro. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, and see, Doug, I feel like even like piercings and tattoos are more permanent, right? Even though nowadays, not necessarily permanent, but a fucking mullet, Doug, he grows it out and he has it for three months and he's like, hey, this shit's kind of stupid. Just take some scissors to the back of the head. Boom. He's good. You know? Just let him see how dumb he looks with it and then he'll cut it off. <laughs> That's all you got to do, right? He's Doug. going to look like a fucking A1 goofball. I wanted when I was a kid for well a kid maybe like fifteen. I wanted fucking dreadlocks so bad, dog. I wanted dreads so fucking bad, and I even grew my hair out to like my shoulders. And I was thinking about actually dreading them, and then I bitched out and I didn't do it. <laughs> I had a fucking uh, I had a rat tail, bro. It was, it was long hair, but it was only like started from the neck that much down. Yeah, until I was like nineteen or twenty. I started I started growing it at like 14. Yeah. It was long, bro. It went all the way down to the bottom of my back. Oh, rat tail. Doug, you know what? But you know what? I think that rat tail was a little appropriate for the times when you when you did have it. Doug, yeah. I went to school. Let me see. When was this? I definitely wasn't the only one, that's for sure. Doug, I had a class with the kid in 2011. And this kid had a rat tail, like, probably like this long, and it was braided. Yeah. Right? And that was 2011. He worked at a Walmart near my house, and for years after that, maybe like four or five years, he was like a little manager at that Walmart, and the dude was still rocking it. I haven't seen him since, but I feel like the dude is still rocking that to this day. Oh, I had it. I had mine. Like I said, I had mine until I just, you know what? Again, we talked earlier. What I tell you that I always fuck my addiction. Huh? Money. And so when I finally cut that fucking rat tails, because I wanted a job that wasn't delivering pizzas and I didn't want to just make mental wage no more. And I, I felt like that fucking thing was holding me back. So yeah. I cut it. I was like, fuck that. I need to get my scratch. I'm a grown man now. This shit was cute when I was a kid, but, you know, ain't no one going to hire some fucking 19, 20 year old with fucking hair down in the middle of his back to, to bag your groceries at the time. Now these fuckers get away with whatever they want, right? Mm -hmm. they, they do all kind of crazy shit at the grocery <clears throat> store. But back in the day, you had to be presentable. Yeah, there was, there was a period of time when we were younger where it definitely was. Dog, now kids are getting jobs bagging groceries, pushing carts, whatever, with tattoos on their face. Yes. Doug, do you remember when Mike Tyson got a tattoo on his face? How I do. We thought this dude was like, we already know he's a maniac, but he just he just set in stone how much of a maniac he is because now he has a tattoo on his face. Bro, they treated Mike Tyson when he got the tattoo on his face. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Go ahead. You won't hurt my feelings. But they acted about him when he did that. The same way they're acting towards Kanye right now. Yeah, right? He's outrageous. He's out of his mind. What are we going to do with him? He's crazy. Now, mm -hmm. and Doug, and think about it. When we were younger, if you had tattoos and they could even be covered. Say it was a tattoo on your forearm or coming out mm -hmm. of your shirt sleeve and you were going to work somewhere. You would think about, you would think twice about getting a tattoo even right here that, you know, I might have to wear a long sleeve or whatever. Now, and you had to have a decent haircut. You had to be clean shaven, right? Now, dog, people are looking like straight up clowns, and 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 I don't I don't care if I sound old, dog. They really are. Like I'm seeing some of these kids that are walking around at the college I work for. They're even like work studies, or if I go to even like Walmart or Albertsons or wherever, dog, I'm like for real. People let you guys work here like that. For like, bro, all I'm gonna say is this: it's crazy. You something you're fucking 18 and you want to get a little fucking parrot on your back. That shit gonna look like a pterodactyl when you're fucking 83. Mm. You know. And not only that, I remember when I was young, bro. I was like 15, 16, doing stuff probably I shouldn't have been doing at the time. I remember this OG told me. He said, "Check it out." He goes, "You ain't got no crazy tattoos. You're not gang affiliated." 
he goes, and you look like you're just, you know, like a normal, decent uh, kid. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You, know, you have nothing stands out. He said, play your part. He goes, don't draw all kind of attention to yourself with crazy ass jewelry and crazy ass cars and flashing and tattoos and piercings. He said, if you're going to, you want to sneak in and sneak out. He goes, you want to be look like a square. Like back in the day, like they used to game up. We would game up and you try to look nerdy. Take advantage of looking like a nerd. If you got tattoos on your face and you get pulled over, do you think you're not having more chance to get fucking harassed and searched? And if you're like a nerdy, I don't care if you're Hispanic, even a brother, but if you're buttoned up and you're suited and booted and you got a laptop and a briefcase and like you're playing the role, you're probably not going to get fucked with. Yeah, no, 100 percent, Doug. You're just fucking. And that's the thing is that you you don't you don't want to stand out or or draw attention to being like obnoxious looking right you know if you like you said you look a little square you look a little normal then then you're just going to kind of go under the radar but just i don't know dog well well, right now bro i'm wearing jeans a t-shirt i got my shoes on and a hat right so pretty much all i got is my arms and my hands and my face more money more problems that's real this is what stay away from it yeah you got like 90 percent of the body to tattoo why do you feel the need to tell everyone that, you know, you, you need a tattoo of a bird on your cheek? Yeah. Or like that kid, that kid from the Island Boys, you know, Gim with the palm tree on his forehead. Like, do you really feel the need to tell everyone at first meeting when they see you that you like palm trees that much? <laughs> uh, Hi, my name's Gim. You're like, I'm palm tree mother. I just, you're fucking around. Dude. What, what's, help me understand why it's so important that someone would place something right there like that. So that's the first thing people see. Yeah, I don't know, Doug. Like, like that. I don't know. That's crazy. I'm a uh, Raider fan, but I don't want a Raider shield on my fucking cheek. Yeah, it would be dope. Get a, get a, a little tiny Raiders one right here as a teardrop. I'll get three of them, bro, in a, in a triangle. The one, two, three, all shields. I know it's probably kind of a sore subject right now, but since you brought it up, Doug, what, what are you thinking about? Are you you think? Are you thinking the Lakers? I mean, the Lakers. Are you thinking the Raiders are gonna? Gonna have somewhat of a season, or do you think it's just their? You think their season's kind of over already? Oh, hopefully you can punch in Denny Green uh, when you're doing a little editing. The 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 clip where he says we are who they thought that they were, or whatever the hell he says. Because I'm a Raider fan, homie, and check it out. Last year was great. We went to the playoffs, but look what happened, right? It still had fucking until they prove me otherwise. I have the same expectation. Yeah. Year in, year out. Now, does that mean I don't think that they can't pull out a a, a ten and seven record or a, a nine and eight record or you know an eight and nine record? Yeah, I think they could. I think they could put. We got a good team. Can they put a little streak together and make it look cute in the end? Maybe. But do I feel good about them if they make it to the playoffs? No. I'll be excited and I'll be screaming for them or rooting for them. Mm. But bro, they're the Raiders, and until they prove me otherwise, they're the Raiders. I'm not a big Derek Carr fan. I've said that for years. Um, you know, I get torn because when you look at the starting 32 quarterbacks in the league, I'd probably rather have him than the bottom 17 for sure. But uh, it's just he has the ability to look like Tom Brady one night, bro. And then the other night he he looks like, you know, freaking uh, Kirk Cousins at his worst. I just I don't know, man. Yeah. You know, right now I'm just kind of like <sighs> when I look at like the season opener for the Lakers, right? I'm like the last few years, dog. They they haven't had a great team, and I'm just like, it's not even that they haven't had a great team. They've been, I feel like they've been cursed a little bit with injuries and whatever, and and whatever. But I looked at the I, actually, I hit you up the day of the season opener because that was the yeah, day they actually presented the Warriors with their rings, and you know, and I was just like, oh man, over here, whatever. Well, the first half of that game, the first. uh Actually, the first quarter and like a half, they were looking pretty good. And I was like, dang. And actually, my homie Luis, that, you know, his his um, his showly shout out, you know, was like, dude, he was like, you know, they're looking good. This and this and this. Boom. Right after that, dog, the fucking Warriors went on like a, like a 10-0 run or something. <laughs> and we we're like, damn. You see that move by Steph on Anthony Davis where he just shook the shit out of him and hit that fadeaway jumper? I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but oh, bro, that, yeah, I, that was maybe I eliminated it from my memory. 
he was wrong for that one. I'll just tell you that much. He was wrong. You know what, Doug? I was I'm I'm a little sad at the time of recording this. The Lakers are 0 2. They just lost to the freaking um the Clippers? Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> Thank you for knowing what's up with my team. So, oh, but you know what though, Doug? Like honestly, I'm out. I'm hella stoked right now because the freaking just the the NBA in general oh, is yeah. the se- the season's been going on for a few days, Doug, but it, it's freaking it's been some dope ass games. I feel like oh, um, even like the NFL, most of the games this season are settled within what ten and a half points or something. For sure. And so this season, even the with the first you know few days of the NBA season, these games are going into overtime. They're being settled with a shot at the you know buzzer of the fourth quarter. They, it is actually like right off the bat, such a good season already, and we're only a few days in. I'm loving it. No, me too. And I'm, I'm trying to look right now for that kid's name because I forgot it. But I think his name's like Pablo Banchero for the Magic. Did you see him, the number one pick? The mm-hmm. game he had opening night? And then no. he just doo-dooed on this man. He just took flight and doo-dooed on him. Gave him a Charmin on the way down. And oh, my God. It was, <laughs> it was filthy. It was just he, he freaked him. It was Doug, bad. there's so many young dudes that are, are kicking ass right now, man. And it's so dope. Like, even um, my buddy had hit me up and he was like, dude, he's like, the Pelicans are looking so dope right now. And they smash KD in them. Doug, and it's, and, uh, I was so pissed in that game because. Oh, that's his I, name. What is it? Pa- pa- uh, Paolo Banchetto. Okay. He's bad, dude. I'm telling you, I'm calling it right now. Just don't everyone say it's game two. I'm calling it. Doug, that. He's, he's getting rookie of the year. And uh, if he doesn't get some type of Luca consideration and people say that he's badass, I'm telling you he's badass. Doug, just look at the – well, oh, yeah, my buddy hit me up. He was telling me about the Pelicans. And I'm like, Doug, the only thing that sucks about the Pelicans is that they're kicking ass and they're still called the Pelicans. Doug, talk about a weak-ass name, you know? I'm like, it is that – to me, I'm like, oh. I feel like even the Guardians and the – commanders and i feel like these teams i feel like their names have grown on me a lot more quickly not me doug i mean i feel like they're weak but i feel like the pelicans is still the weakest dog that is the weakest name because even the commanders bro who the fuck you commanded right you can't even command my attention yeah i'd rather have a command strip maybe that's what they're commanding right maybe that's the logo and the guardians what the fuck you guarding Uh. guarding what they're, they're dog. They can't be the guardian angels. We already have the angels, so they're the guardians. Well, that's a horrible name. They could have came up with something better. Ah, but let's the please, Pelicans. Please. I just can't get past the Pelicans. But their team is looking dope. The freaking dog. Um, I can't wait. Let me see. Ja what's Morant. Cleveland? Oh my what's Cleveland goodness. Cleveland known for? What's Cleveland known for, bro? Cleveland. Let's come up. Let's come up with a better name for them right now. Cleveland. What are they known for? Fuck the guardians. They're the Drew Carries. What else? Uh, that was a horrible name. How'd they come up with the Guardians? I don't know, Doug. I don't. I mean, I wasn't in those meetings. It says right here, Cleveland's designated as the Gamma Global City by the Global and World Cities Research Network. Call them the Gammas. You could have been the Gammas over the fucking fucking Guardians. At yeah. least it would have tied to something that they got going on. You know what I'm saying? They have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You could have been Cleveland Rock and Rollers. I mean, I don't know, bro. The Cleveland Rock and Rollers. <laughs> the Cleveland Rock Stars. Yeah. The Rockers. They could have been the like Rockers. Marty Jannetty and, and Shawn Michaels, right? Oh, I'm just saying. The There's Cleveland the Rockers. Doesn't that sound pretty dope? Right. Well, okay. It says 12 things Cleveland is, or Cleveland is famous for updated in 2022. Bro, it's the home of Superman. They could have been the Cleveland Supers. Oh, I thought you said the homeless Superman. No, the home of Superman. Oh. Uh-huh. So they could have been been fucking the Cleveland Supermans or the Cleveland Super. I don't know, bro. Cleveland Supermans. <laughs> They're the fucking Guardians, bro. Uh, I no, I feel you, dog. I feel you. And it's just like, uh, but long story short, I'm so excited, dog, because the freaking. What about did you happen to catch that Cardinals game or no on Thursday Night Football? That's that. No, I didn't. I saw. I've been watching the score, and I got Kyler Murray in one of my leagues. Dog, but the freak I, I just, they they had I, just, I read they got into a fight. And they coach. had two interceptions back to back in Phoenix. It was so dope, dog. It, it was it was cool. But but I feel like right now the NFL has been pretty dope as far as like yes. there's nobody standing out like 
okay, this, all right, th- we don't even have to watch the rest of the season. The NBA, everybody's coming out swinging, and it's just like, oh, shit. Da-na-na, da-na-na. Christian McCaffrey just got traded to the 49ers for draft picks. Oh, really? Bro, they just traded Christian McCaffrey, and I got him in one of my leagues. Yeah. Damn. <sighs> well, there you go. That's crazy. That's crazy, bro. There you go. But I feel like I was actually, I was telling my buddy the other day, I was like, Doug, I was like, right now, it's like such a good time to be a sports fan because we have, let me see, by the time this airs, that means last night was UFC 280. Right. UFC 280, one of the dopest cards in a while. We have, Doug, football's in full swing. The NBA's starting. Soccer is crazy as fuck for anybody that's into soccer. We have the um, boxing every now and again, right? We've had a couple of fights this last couple of weekends that have been dope. Baseball, I mean, it, I'm not a huge baseball fan, but not even just either. keeping up it's with only it. Time, it's the only time I watch, and I watch now. Yeah, and so, Doug, right, like right now, I'm like, is the dopest time of year. Every day you it got is. something going on. Sometimes you have multiple, like, we had Thursday night football was the same time the Lakers were playing the um, Clippers and it's kind of going back and forth. What am I watching? What am I watching? Okay. How's this going? It, it's just like, Oh my goodness. I it's, it's a fun time to be a sports fan. It's, it's the best time in sports. You're absolutely right. Because here in a couple of weeks, we're going to a month. We're going to have the world series. Mm-hmm. You're going to be halfway at the halfway point or maybe a little further in the NFL season. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to, you're going to be seeing who the players are. Who's, who's fresh out the gate in the NBA season. You know, how, how is KD and Kyrie and the Nets looking in a month after Doug, 15, 20 games? I was so pissed when they um, when they played the Pelicans because I had the um, I had the, the I had the Nets plus like six and a half. You took it. Oh, my goodness. I had and I had them in a parlay. They were the only I had like a six leg parlay. They're the only ones I didn't hit. And I don't I, think I'd ever be able to bet on them while Ben Simmons is in the lineup. It was it was terrible. Well, I know that now. What? You know, um oh, you know what did hit for me? What's that? And I got I got a um Rock Hard Weekends? Freaking um no, the um the Broncos. Doug, taking the under on the Broncos this season is such a good thing to do. First re- hell yeah. <laughs> Russell Wilson can't score shit right now. He throws more picks than he does touchdowns. Oh, my goodness, dog. It's so like, like, oh, my goodness. I know. Dog, I was watching. I think, did they play? They played on Monday Night Football, right? Uh, Yeah, I think it was. So, Doug, I was watching that shit on TV, and somebody had a live TikTok. So, I was watching the stream on TikTok, which was like a couple of minutes ahead of, like, the broadcast. Right. So I was watching and the last like few minutes of the game, I was just like, oh, shit. And then I'd watch like for the good quality on my TV. And then because the dude that was streaming it was in like the on like the 57th balcony. Right. Oh, shit. So yeah, I was watching it from his perspective, but I was so into the game that I was watching both. I was like, oh, shit. And I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, he's out of bounds. All right. And then I'd watch like the HD one. Oh, OK, OK, go. It, it, it's just fun, dog. It's just crazy. I, I trip out right now for somebody like like an Ian Kennedy, right? Or somebody who just doesn't give two shits about sports right now. I'm like, it's so crazy right now to be such a fan of sports right now. I'm like, I can't imagine being like, I got hey, a question for that. I'm gonna wa- I'm gonna watch an episode of you know a rerun of Everybody Loves Raymond. Instead of all this that's going on, I, I trip out, dog. I don't know if people could be like that, but whatever. I, I got a question. That brings me to a question. All right, what's up? Well, obviously, Ian Kennedy, you say he don't even like sports. Mm-hmm. Right? But he has to like something, or he wouldn't listen to the Cavino Rich show, right? Yeah. So what do you think that he has in common with the fellas if he doesn't like sports? Because there has to be other shit they do that he doesn't like, too. It almost seems like, I know it's not, but it almost seems like it could be a deal breaker in a lot of situations. Because if you don't like sports and everyone else is die hard about it, how much of shit in common do you really have with them? He's real big on like The Breakfast Club and like movies from like the 80s. I think, um, yeah, I think 80s and 90s when it comes to like movies, like to the Back to the Futures, maybe the Rockies. I'm not sure if he's a huge Rockies fan, but I think more... 
Entertainment? I think entertainment because I think movies and some music he can relate to them on. Is he an ass magnet or is he a family man? I don't know his personal life. I got some uh, would you rathers. Okay. Would you rather? And it's not the same subject either. It's just would you rather. Okay. And I'm going to start with Megan Fox or Scarlett Johansson. I'm going to go with Scarlett Johansson. Good call. I'm also going to go, this is a tough, well, I think I might have asked you this one before. Top Gun or Back to the Future? Back to the Future. I've never seen Top Gun. I uh, know. I did ask you that before. I knew it. But <laughs> they got fucked up. But, oh, whatever. All right. Okay. Uh, chocolates or gummies? You're snacking. Chocolates. I like both. I like both too, but if I had to pick one, I'm going chocolate. What's your favorite chocolate? What's your go-to? Uh... I'll, I mean, I'm down for a Kit Kat or a Reese's. You know what? I think if I'm going straight chocolate, I'm going to fucking almond Hershey bar. Hershey's. You can't go wrong with Hershey's. I was gonna, I was gonna say Kit Kat or Hershey's, but then I go as soon as I said Kit Kat, I remembered a Reese's, and I'm like, I can't ever go wrong with the Reese's. So no, you can't. No, you can't for real. Well, you can't go wrong with M and M's. But uh, next one, weed or alcohol. I'm not big on either one, to be honest. Um, no? Pizza. <laughs> tacos or pizza? Uh, tacos. Uh, legit street tacos? Tacos. Or if you're going to say Taco Bell or pizza, probably pizza. No, I got, you know what? Fuck that. I got a better question. Street tacos that are legit versus Chicago or New York style or like the best pizza you could get? Tacos. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I, I'm I'm Mexican dog. I can't help it. Yeah, and I'm with you. I don't even want to like them that much, but I can't help it. I I do. And and they don't make a mess. They're so easy to eat. Oh yeah. Well, that's all I have, bro. Okay. Let me see. Um, let me see if I have any would you rather's. Okay. Since we just talked about Reese's, Kit Kat, and Hershey's, mm -hmm. the almond Hershey's with almonds, right? Oh yeah. And we just talked about sports, Hershey's, Reese's. Hershey's with almonds. Who are you starting? Who are you benching? And who are you trading? Out of what is it again? At what name the three? Reese's, Kit Kat, and Hershey's with almonds. Who am I starting? Who am I trading? And who am I benching? Yeah. I'm starting Hershey's with almonds. Okay. I'm trading. Ah, uh, dude, this is difficult because, you know, you, you ask me on two different days, you might get two different answers. But if you had to ask me right now, I'm trading Kit Kat. Oh! But but that's only because I'm not that hungry, right? <laughs> I think I think there's I think there's more Kit Kat than there is those two little ass peanut butter cups. So if you ask me on a different day, I might go Kit Kat because you could break those off in fours. All right, you want to be a total fatso? Okay. Go to the label. Go to the label and see which one weighs more. <laughs> oh, dang! <laughs> that's what's up, dog. Or you get more chocolate at. Exactly. But are you really getting more? Which one? That's a good question. Which one are you really getting more chocolate with? Because in a Reese's peanut butter cup, you have all that peanut butter. But in a Kit Kat, you have all the wafer. True. So which one are you getting more chocolate with? The Reese, or the, the, the Hershey's with almond. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the Hershey's with almonds. Dog, I haven't had a Hershey's with almonds in probably years. Like I, I don't even know how many years. Or a straight, uh, um, not a Caramello, but they got a straight chocolate bar too. That bad boy's good. Dog, you know I had never heard of a Caramello until I met my girl. Really? Yeah. What about Anthony? Is that like your homie or what? I hey, played Caramello Anthony. Didn't he play for the Nuggets? <laughs> hey, oh, there we go, dog. There we go. Damn, you got me with that one. I, I thought it was legit like another candy I've never heard of. Oh, shit. I thought, it was so, I thought it was so dope when I was a kid and I discovered a whatchamacallit. The whatchamacallits are fire, bro. I was like, oh, shit. They, it's, it's fire and it has a cool ass name. Come yeah. on now. You can't go wrong with that. It's so like... Are you gonna Go so ahead. We, we gotta we gotta play that game. All so right. Let's go. What you call it? M and M's. Any flavor you like. It don't matter. Just M and M's in general. And Snickers bar. Oh, this is easy for me. Um, M and M's. I'm starting M and M's. I'm benching a what you call it, and I'm trading Snickers. Get the fuck out of here with that Snickers. Damn. 
I've never been a fan of Snickers, dog. I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll freaking, I'll, I'll eat one because I mean, look at me. But I'm, I mean, you know, it's like, hey, do you think she's hot, or would you? Those are two different questions, right? So that's like to tie into Rich's uh, thing with the hot chick with sweat. If you saw the sweat, you're not going to eat the damn candy or what? Oh no, I'm going to eat it regardless. Oh okay. You know. Yeah, no, for sure. I it's like fun. if if you, you all right. This is how I look at the sweat analogy to the candy. You open up your favorite candy, and you know you just mopped your tile floor, right? And you drop it, and you're like, "Oh shit! Are you just gonna throw that in the trash? Or are you gonna blow that bitch off and still eat it?" I got a better one for you, bro. Okay, what is it? You know when you open it, and the fucker looks old. Okay, you open it, and it's got that little crust on it or whatnot, or it looks oh, a little white. Oh, that sucks, dog. Remember that? You know how they do that? Sometimes yeah. they don't rotate their shit at the liquor store. You might get a a little crusty one. Dog, oh yeah, that dog, that's so that's so disappointing. And it then is. if you go, nah, you know it's more disappointing when you look at it and it looks like a little old, and you're like, dog, I'm, you know what, I'm being too judgmental. It's chocolate, and then you take a bite, and then it just it kind of tastes it's like shit. Hard. Oh, hard. dog, you know come what? on now. Being a grocery retail guy, though, I got some advice for people. What's up? If you if you're not going to your home liquor store, or the store that you go to all the time that you're comfortable with, mm-hmm. don't try shit that's not in the top five at any other place. You go on vacation to fucking West Carolina, make sure you get a Kit Kat because that shit sells everywhere. Don't go get that. <laughs> Wait, did you say West Carolina? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know. But he West be- Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> No, you said West Carolina, <laughs> not North Carolina, not South Carolina, Doug. I, I've heard of the Carolinas. I thought they were talking about North and South, Doug. I'm, I need to break out my map and learn about West Carolina. I heard they were going to change the name of Montana because it's fucking bug, and they're going to call it West Carolina. Uh, West Carolina. Uh, I remember that song from high school, Doug. West Carolina, take your shirt off. Remember that song? Hey, no, I don't, but... Anyhow, if you're going to go visit these crazy ass places, you got to make sure that if you are getting candy, you do get the top five, the Kit Kats, the Snickers, the plain M&Ms, the basic Hershey's, because if you start getting whatchamacallits in those places, they're probably going to be fucked up. But if they don't sell very well, yeah, you're, rotate, right. you're getting bunk shit. Same thing with Hostess. Don't, don't go try to get them fucking raspberry zingers and shit at, at the liquor store in the middle of fucking, you know. Um, Greeley, Colorado. I'm just saying, bro. They might yeah. not have. They've been. They might have been there for a couple months. Get you know what? I ha- I have a a soda analogy for you when it comes to that because growing up my whole life I drink diet soda because my mom's like hyperglycemic or hypoglycemic or one of them fucking glycemic shits, right? right. And um, so growing up we didn't have a lot of we didn't have really regular soda in the house at all. So. As an adult, it's still my go-to. Like, I'll go for a Diet Coke, not because I'm trying to be all fit, just because that's what I, I my preferences, right? Yeah, like, go, like I'll, go, I'll go for, exactly. But look it, you have look to, it. better look it, you have to be, if you're not going to um, even like a Circle K or something, and you know, hey, this, you know they don't sell a whole lot of Diet Coke here, you better check the expiration date on that bad boy, or you'll get home dug sometimes, and it, it, I know it's not the sweetest shit of all time, right? I just, I just prefer it because I drink it my whole life. But if you get like a flat Diet Coke, oh my gross. goodness, dog. Oh my goodness. It, it not only, dog, not only is it gross because I've had like a flat regular Coke or a flat Pepsi. And it's just kind of like, oh, that was kind of weak, but it was still really sweet. Doug, a you get a, a busted Diet Coke. It tastes like ass, dog. It has like an aftertaste. It is, it's just terrible. So that's my equivalent to when it comes to that. So, yeah, you know, don't don't go to fucking, you know, some place you've never been before and try to get fucking airheads. They're probably gonna be hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just saying the laffy taffy. That's just gonna be hard. If you want the soft taffy, you got to go to the hood. They sell a shitload of it in there. Yeah, for sure, dog. Do you remember, dog? I don't know if this was. At least there's actually a store, a, a little hood store that still sells those fucking, um, those pantuflas, the black ones oh, with yeah. the corduroy, you know, well, there's, they, you know what they still have in there? Mm-hmm. Do you remember those belts you palm, could get that had combs. the, huh? Palm combs. Palm combs 
with the three flowers yeah. and the the belt dog that had the letter of your name on it of your last name and shit bro. do you remember dog you would fucking you'd have to wiggle that little metal piece to get it out <laughs> talk about a throwback dog you got the corduroy slippers in those stores yeah like all the white tees and the fucking black tees dog i remember when i was a kid i was working at cracker barrel right i was a cashier and I was wearing those slippers that you're talking about, the black ones with the corduroy, right? At Cracker Barrel? <laughs> yeah, we were, Doug. You, no, wait. The, you're, hold on. We just made, let me clean my ears out real quick. All right. Did I hear you say that you wore black corduroy slippers to work at Cracker Barrel? <laughs> yeah. I was a oh, cashier, dog. Right. I'd get there, go get my drawer, come over here. People, Bro. think about, think about, uh. Think about I don't give a uh, fuck what you were. That's not appropriate to wear those things to work. <laughs> I don't care if you fucking did dishes in the back and didn't see nobody. Well, this actually ties into do, doing dishes in the back. So I'm working at Cracker Barrel. I'm wearing those corduroy slippers, right? With my black dress pants and my white oh, button great. up and my brown apron. My brown apron, Doug, and I'm in the back, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not supposed to be in the back because I'm the cashier. Right. Okay. I'm supposed to be there so people can check out with either their dinner or their, you know, retail items because we had a little retail store. Right. Right. Well, I'm in the back, which I'm never supposed to be back there. But all my did friends you sell black. Did you sell black corduroy slippers at your job? Nah. Or, nah. But all my friends worked in the back. They were all grill cooks and dishwashers, or whatever. Right. All the homies. So one day I was back there. And I was like, oh, I didn't see anybody. I was like, ah, maybe I'll go back up front. I go to walk up front, dog, and I slip in my slippers, right? And I, dog, I look like I was on freaking the um, Home Alone, like straight up, boom, up in the air, boom, on my ass, right? I, I, I'm like, oh, my God. But I'm like, you know what? Thank God nobody saw me, right? Then... I didn't realize my friend John was behind the grill. He had pushed it forward and he was behind it cleaning. So when I fell, I'm like, oh my God. But at least nobody saw me. And all I hear is my homie John McCormick over here going, dude, are you okay? <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. And I had to play it off, dog, because first of all, I'm not supposed to be back there. Second of all, I'm not supposed to be in my slippers, right? third of all what the fuck you know and so yeah i got up and i had to limp my way all back to the front like all fucking hurting and so bro what was your mindset at that point to think that wearing those slippers to work was okay i did it a lot and the boss never said nothing they, they never saw it they never said anything they never looked i don't think they paid attention really they didn't have a dress code or what yeah they had a dress code we were supposed to wear black non-slip shoes well, for, yeah, I mean, from what you told me happened, it sounds like there's a reason for that. Well, I learned that eventually. Did you go get you some black non-slip shoes? I had some, but I'd wear them on occasion. Wow. Yeah. You did, know, anyone in your, did anyone in your house see you go to work like that or what? I don't know. I don't remember anybody telling me anything. I'm just they, tripping, bro. They <laughs> probably didn't know to see their dog, because think about it. You just see black slacks and black shoes. And a white button up or blue button up, whatever we color we had, you know, uh, and my great. brown apron. That's fucking great. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking great. And fucking black chonklas. <laughs> they weren't chonklas, dog. I wasn't showing the Cheetos. All right. They were slippers. Very different. Very different. My bad. Uh, that's, fucking, that's great. All right, dog. Well, how are, how are you doing? You got anything else? If not, we could wrap this bad boy up. Uh, I'm good, man. I don't got too much. I'm good. I don't have nothing else left. If you guys want to come on an episode, let us know. Hit us up after show BL. Text us 928-235-5285. Let us know. Hey, I'm a fan of the show. I want to make an appearance. We'll have you guys come on the show. Ask Joey in Texas. Ask Carl Reinhardt. Ask Funky Monkey. Ask Columbo. Ask Sam and uh, Miguel. Ask freaking uh, Baseline Trey. Ask Tim Titolinski. Ask freaking Mike Dur Durband. Not Durband. It's Durband. Mike Durband. Ask I'm Key. Ask freaking. Ask anybody who's Tito, been on Tito, the show. Tito and E. Ask Tito and E. They've been on a couple times and they're probably coming back on again. Yeah, so go ahead. Ask any of them how it was, if they liked it, if they hated it. And then you guys come on too. Come on. 
after show but later find us on any social media go follow our tiktok we've been getting millions of views if you don't believe us go check out our profile at after show bl click it as many times as you can yeah click go like all the videos you know share your comments i'm soupy was another freaking soupy yeah. he was another guest on the show yeah man after show but later episode number 151 do you have baseline tray ready or you just want to bounce I got him. Baseline Trey, we got to go out in style like we do every time. After show, but later, El Kukui, El Kukui underscore 805 across all social media. It's your boy D. We'll see you next time. On the road to the riches because it's all about the paper. Now buckle up your seats and prepare for the journey. Let the music ease your soul. Grab a spliff and start burning. Uh, relax with us and take a trip to the heavens. And come and spend a day in the 757.